sharing on television. I hope your new year is going great. And I hope and pray that this message that will deal with peace, which is so much needed, that we can find not only on a national level, but also in our everyday lives. So my text is coming from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. Very familiar verses, two verses, verses 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And all of God's people said, Amen. and my subject is, let there be peace on earth. It says he shall be called the Prince of Peace. He comes to convince people in the world to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God. He comes to bring peace with God to those who believe in him. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 5 and 1, Therefore, being justified by his blood, we have peace with God through him. And I'm hoping today that someone's going to get right with God. When you have peace with God, a whole lot of things that were going wrong get right. Because sometimes the problem ain't with someone else. The problem is with you and your personal relationship to God, and that is the reason we have an altar call, an altar invitation every Sunday service, because I don't know who's out here today that wants to start their new year off right and get at peace with God. You see, some people take, like Israel, a band-aid approach to their sins. They take a band-aid and try to put it over their sins. I accidentally hit my arm uh, over the holidays, I won't tell you how because it really wasn't bright. But I had to get these like little almost stitches up in my arm because a Band-Aid by itself wouldn't fix it. You see, we try to put Band-Aids on major wounds. A Band-Aid is not for major wounds. You may need surgery for major wounds. And what the prophet is trying to tell the Israelites, you're always doing a band-aid approach with all your ceremonial offices. And what you really need is to be cleansed from the inside out, just like you and me, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. No, brothers and sisters, Jesus became our peace with his birth. And that's why the angels proclaim in Luke 2, 13 and 14, at his birth, suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Like the angels, we cry out today, let there be peace on earth. We live in a world filled with violence, hatred, constant conflict, tragedies, and turmoil. As we now reflect back on the year 2014, we have seen this on a global level. The Ebola plague which killed people in Africa and elsewhere. The rise and fall of the militant ISIS. The disappearance of Flight 370, that Malaysian flight that they still don't know what happened to it. The terrible civil war in Syria. And all of us were horrified by the massacre of over 140 people, most of them children in Pakistan week before last. Ongoing conflict in Afghanistan, Iran, Israel, Iraq. War and conflict and trouble is one of the end 
time signs that Jesus gives us in Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 through 8. And I want to read it because I want you to see we are a word church here. Jesus tells his disciples, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows or birth pains. And as we look at the global conflicts that we are faced with, as we look at the catastrophes and tragedies and the hatred that men show toward each other who have all been made in the image of the same God. We do not have to look so far away for drama. We don't have to go to faraway lands to find drama when it is such a part of our everyday lives. I'm going to get some help with this message, Lynn. As long as mankind is self-willed and not seeking and obeying God's will, there will be drama, not peace on earth. If there is drama, and I don't know who I'm talking to, because sometimes y'all mess me up. I'll just be preaching, think I'm not messing with nobody in particular. Then you come after church and ask me why I was talking about you. <laughs> it's rough walking around with a guilty conscience and, and things like, well, how did you know that? I don't know nothing. Maybe the Spirit is talking to you. You are in church, you know. I need you to stay out of my house. I'm going to stay in your house. As long as you come in this church, I'm going to stay in your house because your house is where your mess and your problems and your drama is. It's all right. That's all right. I hope I don't turn off no guests. Hope you'll come back next week. But I want you to note something. If there is drama in multiple areas of your life, your home, your work, your finances, your extended family and friends, be clear on one thing. You are the constant. Some people are drawn to drama like a mosquito to bug sappers. Some of you have them. Put them in your backyard in the summertime, nice bright light. Mosquitoes come. Next thing you know, the mosquitoes are getting what? Zapped. Yeah, they popping pretty good on there, aren't they? I want to get the one with the smoke. There we go. Some people are drawn to those things which ultimately destroy them. Uh, help me preach this message. They are drawn to the things that ultimately hurt and destroy their health, their relationships, and their life. Let me tell you something. I'm 63, and Lord will, in a few months, I'll be 64. I'm in good health, and I'm in good strength. I choose the drama I'm in. Oh, yes. I don't get drawn in just every crazy thing. I will refuse to because, see, I want to be healthy, and I can't be healthy if people are driving me crazy, I need some help out of my message this day. When a person has been traumatized, they get therapy. To those you watch it on TV and here today, some of you have been dramatized. And you need drama therapy. So I want to give you quickly your drama reduction pledge for 2015. Now, if you just going to read it, don't say nothing. If you ain't going to implement it, just leave it alone. Go do something else. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> but if you want to be sincere about reducing drama in your life, note these that are on the screen and see which of them fit you and where you're going to do some improvement. Number one, I will stop feeding into other people's drama. Why? I got enough of my own. Number two, I will stop assuming and first get the facts. 
Number three. Uh-oh, here's a big one. I'll stop worrying about tomorrow. Note what Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, verses 31 through 34. He said, don't worry saying what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what shall we wear. For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first. Let me hear you say, seek first. His kingdom and his rights and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Today's realities are enough to deal with. Number four, I will stop worrying about what I can't control. Number five, I will stop running with toxic people. Have you ever thought of the, just, I, I, I got to find better ways to say things. Y'all pray for me because the only thing that comes to my mind, have you ever thought just how stupid it is I'm trying to find something better, but I'm on a clock. How stupid it is to run with toxic people. That's a bottle of poison. How many of you just raise your hand, got poison in your house? This is a disinfectant, it's a cleaner, you got poison. Do you put that poison in the refrigerator right next to your orange juice and milk? Because the very nature of poison, because of its danger, is to get it as far away from you as possible and only to use it in the context from which it is designed. So how are you going to run with toxic people and not be poisoned and not be damaged? Now, no, I didn't say you can get away totally from toxic people because you can Somebody said, yes, I can. No, you can't. Because some of these toxic people are related to you. <laughs> They're related. They're your cousin, your aunts, your nieces, your nephews. You can't, you can't get away from them. I mean, you got to see them at family reunion. You got to see them at baby blessings. I, I mean, but you can limit so I don't run with people who are going to bring me down and shoot me down. You can never fully eliminate drama, but you can reduce and you can minimize it. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom. It means much more than overcoming the drama in your life. It means wholeness and well-being, health, prosperity, and security. And I say this to all who are over the age of 40. The older you get, the more valuable peace is to you. I don't, have to, I don't have to have a lot of Christmas gifts. If there can just be peace in my house, that's the biggest present you can get. What good is it to have a whole lot of things with a whole lot of turmoil? Peace with God is the grand necessity in this fallen world. Jesus is the Prince of Peace to those who put their trust in Him. Once you are at peace with God, then you can experience the peace of God. It's the peace of God that gets you through the difficult times in your life. Note what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, which is also a part of your responsive reading today. The Apostle Paul says, we are not to be anxious about anything, but in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we are to present our request to God and the, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard. It's like soldiers around your heart and around your mind. That peace of God will guard your heart and guard your mind so that you can experience peace in the very worst of circumstances in life. 
Do I have some witnesses that know a little bit about the peace of God? The more you invest in your personal relationship with God, the more you will experience the peace of God. I don't, it is no reason for the believer not to experience the peace that Jesus died for you to have. Jesus died for you to have this peace. Where the Spirit of God prevails, you will find and experience the peace of God. As I close, Jesus' peace also includes ruling this world in the end time with justice and righteousness. I want you to go back to my text in Isaiah 9 and 7. It says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will what? Be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. Justice and righteousness. Peace was the legacy which Jesus left his church to have when he was departing the world. Know what John 14 and 27 tells us. As Jesus prepares to ascend back to heaven and go to Calvary's cross, he tells his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. And I want to challenge you as I close out my message can there be peace without justice? Can there be peace when injustice abounds in the land? In America, injustice abounds. The killing of Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and others have left strained relationships between African Americans and the police dramatized recently in the brutal killing of two New York Police Department officers. The racism that is in America, the hatred that is in America, the violence. Sometimes I wonder, like Marvin Gaye, What's going on? The slightest thing and disagreement between two people escalates into violence. Today, there's the slightest violence. I'm still not over. What happened to that twin? Right in the hood, 63rd in the state. How many times have I been there? And to be killed over a jacket. His twin brother sees it. He's traumatized now for the rest of his life. The parents are through. All the boys that participated in it. Their lives are ruined. And this is what the devil loves to see. He loves to see us destroy ourselves. He loves, and this is why I have to often say, it starts in the home. I made it up in my mind that my kids were never going to see me disrespect their mother. I made it up in my mind from the time I would say that my kids would never see me cuss their mother out. Now, I didn't say I wouldn't get mad at their mother. Because her mother, the mother can make me mad and I make her mad. But it's one thing to be mad, and it's another thing to be disrespectful. I ain't getting no help on this side. I made it up in my mind that if I did something wrong, I wanted to have my kids understand there's nothing wrong with apologizing. 
I wanted my kids to understand and see that there would be times when maybe my tone wasn't right with their mother and to watch me say, I'm sorry for my tone. Now, it may have took a couple of days. <laughs> I ain't trying to make myself no Superman out here. But see, when you are in Christ and God is in your life, God will convict you of stuff like that and stay on you until you go and get it right. Am I helping somebody today? And my kids have never seen their mother disrespect their father. And so it's a house that's come up with peace. And this is why sometimes I'm around this time of year, I just get sentimental because I wonder what kind of man would I have become if Jesus had not come in my life? What kind of person would I be if God had not gotten control of me? When we look at this situation with Michael Brown, and then I'm opening up the doors of the church, we've seen it on TV a hundred times, hands up. Don't shoot. But if you will recall, that's not how it started. The original mantra for Michael Brown was, hands up, man down. Because that was a symbol of the injustice that why are you shooting somebody? when they've already surrendered. But you know, when I saw that, the Spirit moved upon me so strong and related to Jesus' mantra, because Jesus' mantra is not hands up, man down. Jesus' mantra is hands up, man raised up. Because Michael Brown went down and died, but Jesus Christ stretched his arms on Calvary's cross. It looked like the worst injustice in the world. He had committed no sins, done no wrong, hurt nobody, and there he is, hung up on the cross. But when they put him down in the grave, because he was righteous, he couldn't stay in the grave. And because he couldn't stay in the grave, he was raised up from the dead. Let me tell you, those who suffer, and you suffer as a righteous person, if you suffer as a righteous person, believe me, you won't stay down. Your righteousness is going to be a witness to everybody around. So for Jesus, it's hands up. And let's do it even better. Say, arms out. Man raised up. No grave could hold him down. And the most famous slogan for 2014, you all know it, Eric Gardner, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. That is the most quoted slogan of 2014. He's, and we've heard it a hundred times again on television. As the cop grabs him, he says, ah can't breathe. If you can't breathe, you can't live. None of us can live without breath. But I thought again, as my altar workers prepared to come forward, I thought about Jesus' mantra. It's found in John 20, verses 21 and 22. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed. Ah. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus' mantra is, I can breathe life into you through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to worshiping with you at either our 9 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. Sunday services that are biblically based, illustrative, 
contemporary and timely. Our services cater to men, women, the young, and young at heart. We also invite you to join us for Tuesday night Bible study at 7.45 p.m. and Lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. We are so thankful for your continued support of this ministry. And if this excerpt from our service touched your heart to either give financially to the ministry or to purchase the entire worship service on either CD or DVD, please call 708-283-0383 or visit us online at www.victoryapostolicchurch.org. 